Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? So the New Orleans Saints have been um, buyers early in free agency. And typically what you see happen when NFL free agency begins is uh, it, one of two things. You have an initial wave, and you see the high-priced free agents and the, the, the big-dollar free agents um, agree to deals, right? You have the first big wave of free agency. Uh, Orlando Brown going to, to the Cincinnati Bengals. David Onyemata would certainly count in that mix as well, going to the Atlanta Falcons. So you see that. You see the market set and then settle, and then you have another wave of free agency that comes later. Uh, the Saints, because of their cap situation, you might think were not able to be buyers, um, but they found creative ways to get some deals done. Um, and they've, they've been able to supplement their roster in places where they desperately needed to, like we talked about. Uh, at the start of free agency, they had zero defensive tackles after Onyemata and Tuttle signed uh, within the division in Atlanta and Carolina, respectively. But they've went in and addressed that, signing a couple of tackles. They're not done, by the way, there. Uh, adding Jamal Williams, a desperately needed running back help. They got it. But as the Saints have continued to manipulate contracts to free up room, and it's just how they sort of do things, we knew there were certain players that were going to be potential cap casualties. Um, and and we, we talked about them. Michael Thomas, Jameis Winston, Will Lutz. Andrews Pete was one that we talked about as well. And what's kind of amazing about what the Saints did is they are able to keep all of those players. Jameis signed to a lesser deal. He took less to stay. Michael Thomas took less to stay. Will Lutz, they restructured his contract. And now Andrews Pete has agreed to a, a reduced contract. He, he took... A, a pay cut. Um, this isn't a, a restructure in the sense that um, he's getting all of his money just structured in a different way where they took salary, converted it to a signing bonus, etc. He's getting less money. Like, he, he agreed to take less money to stay in New Orleans. As a matter of fact, I know Nick Underhill tweeted the, uh, the particulars of the, the new contract um, earlier today. Um, I'm going to find it really quickly. Um, excuse me. Here it is. So he took – they reduced his um, his base salary, which was going to be $11.825 million. Again, $11.8 million. Now his base is $1.5 with a $4 million roster bonus. That's basically a signing bonus that can be spread out over multiple years. So essentially his eleven eight got reduced to 5-5. Five five. He took a significant pay cut to stay uh, as instead of being released and, and testing the market. So this is a little bit of a tough spot on this one uh, for a couple of reasons. Look, you, you retain a veteran player, a guy who you drafted in the first round, has been a starter for you for a long time. Um, but you also retain a guy, and at a lesser price, but you also retain a guy who has kind of been the angst of a lot of fans because he hasn't stayed healthy, and even when he's been healthy, he hasn't been a great player during his time in the NFL. The The tough spot is knowing that when you re-signed Andrews Pete back in 2020, that five-year deal, you probably overpaid for him. Not probably, you did overpay for him. But you were in a tough spot. Like, you you needed interior linemen. Remember, you, you drafted Eric McCoy and Cesar Ruiz in consecutive years because you knew... You had paid big money for Larry Warford, but you weren't retaining him, so Warford was gone. And you were either going to have to go spend big money in free agency, again, at a time where you're, you've been still doing this restructure cap gymnastics to make it all work. You weren't really going to have gigantic money to go spend, so you probably had to overpay Andrews Pete because he was the most affordable starting option that you had at your disposal at that time. So you probably overpaid a little bit, but it was in line with what you could spend. And so now you got stuck with a contract of a guy who's been injured and has underperformed a bit. And now you're in even, you, you know, as we say, you kick the can down the road, you're in another tough spot. So you looked at this and you could have certainly just parted ways with Pete. 
and gone and found a, a new starting offensive lineman, or you could go say, hey, you want to come back at a reduced price, which is what he did. So on one hand, you're like, all right, you keep your starting left guard. This guy used the first round. You get a cheaper price. But the other part of it is you realize, like, one of your starting offensive linemen here is a guy who's not always been available. When he has been available, he's underperformed, and you're keeping him because he agreed to take a pay cut. So what really did you accomplish here? Um, and, I, and I don't know that you had a better option because if you did let him walk, I don't know that you have an affordable option. We could certainly talk about Trevor Pennick, and I think that may be the key here. It would be magnificent to see Trevor Pennick, last year's first rounder, who was y- – you all know my feelings on him. I love his attitude. I love the physicality, the aggressiveness. And I think stay, if he stays healthy, he'll be a star and play a long time in the NFL. Um, but he got hurt, missed the bulk of last season. When he did come back, was sort of the tackle eligible, just rotational piece, added some depth. Trevor Penning could replace Andrews Pete at left guard. But then what happens if James Hurst is injured or can't perform at a high enough level anymore? Is Trevor Penning your franchise left tra- tackle? Did, did you draft Penning to be your franchise left tackle? And, and if you did, and he worked himself into that role, then you need Pete as your left guard because you don't really have another option. Now, if, if Hurst stays at left tackle and Penning could beat out Pete and be your left guard, okay. I'm with that because you got a guy on a rookie contract. You'll have a fifth-year option, so a lot of that makes sense financially. You know, the thing about Pete is he's entering year nine, and in his eight previous seasons, he has never played a full season. That's one of the really tough parts about Andrews Pete. Twelve games as a rookie, then 15, 15, 13, 10, 13, and then the last two years, 6 and 11. In the last two years, he's combined to play 17 games. He's combined the last two years to play one full season. Uh, you know, if you just, uh, I mean, I'm terrible at math, but let's do this. 4, 1, 1, 3, 6, uh, 3. That would be 10 and then 6. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, uh, 15, 18, 28, 34 games. He has missed 34 games in his eight-year career. 34 games in his eight-year career. I mean, it's an average of of over four per season. That's the tough part about Andrews Pete. That's why you have to go to him and say, take a pay cut. And that's why you could say, well, great, look, we got our starter back on a, on a, on a lesser deal. But the problem is, what are you getting back? You know what I mean? Um, so it, it's weird to, se- to sort of celebrate this move. When most fans have criticized Andrews Pete for most of his career for being sort of average and unavailable, so I'm torn on it. Um, you know, and if if we look at you know f- you know NFL free agent offensive linemen, <laughs> don't go too far because you're about to be on camera. Uh, go that way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's my my dad and my niece uh, who just walked in. Um, if you if you um, if you look at the at the NFL. Uh, offensive linemen, free agents that are available. Um, I, I, I don't know where you realistically go when you look at some of these numbers. Michael, Mike McGlinchey got five years, 87, 5, 87 five. Juwan Taylor got four years, 80. Orlando Brown, who tackled, of course, got four for 64. Um, you know, ben Powers with Denver got four for 51. What what realistically what range are are you talking about here for who's available? I mean, you want to go sign Cody Ford or Dan Feeney or Calvin Anderson. I, I mean, there's nothing there that really screams um, value. So, you know, I, I while I I don't love the idea of continuing on this, you know, this. Um, uh, this treadmill with Andrews Pete, I also know that you had a better option. So if you have to continue on this treadmill, you do so at a lesser price and with Trevor Pennick waiting in the wings that hopefully can step up and be what you drafted him to be, and that's a, a starter on this team. And maybe you look at offensive line in the draft again and take a player who might be able to step up into that role. So, uh, you know, you look at the battles in camp and what that may look like. I think it certainly depends on who is still there to battle in camp. But, you know, the other thing I'll say about Andrews Pete, and this is one of the reasons why – when they did re-sign him, I, 
I was more um, okay with it. Uh, you know, from left to right, you, know, you get Hurst, Pete, McCoy, Ruiz, Ramchick. But remember, for all the years that Teron Armstead was in New Orleans and when Teron Armstead would inevi- inevitably get hurt, it was Andrews Pete who was all- who'd always kick out and play left tackle. And then you had guys like Sinio Calmete who could step in and play guard and sometimes played very well for you. But Pete's ability to kick out and play left tackle and be your backup made him valuable as well. So uh, how those camp battles go this year will be fascinating to watch. And who else they might add to the mix is something worth watching as well. It looks like you've got your first five or even your first six if Pennig is num- is your sixth lineman. But who wins those other couple of spots and who ultimately wins starting jobs is certainly worth watching. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.